Good morning. I'm making potato scramble today. Yes, potatoes. Yes, breakfast. And I had some leftover broccoli in the refrigerator. So I added that to it with my um, red onion and leftover potatoes. I'm just getting them warmed up together and a little, little bit of a browning going on. Not, not a lot. It's not going to be heavily browned. I just really wanted to get it more heated through. Little onion powder, little garlic powder, and today I'm adding rosemary. I do like rosemary. I don't like how prickly it is, but I like the flavor of it. So that's that's going to be a tasty breakfast, and this will probably be, I don't know if I'll eat all that for breakfast or not. We'll see how fast it goes down. It looks good, and I'm hungry. <laughs> see you upstairs. Hi there. It's good to get together again. Now, yesterday, I was challenging you a little bit, a lot, about what you believe. And if you're finding yourself in a place of unbelief, if you're finding yourself to being uh, fearful and anxious, uh, worried, overwhelmed, um, these, these are signs that we're not believing and trusting God, okay? And I've been wrestling the last few days because I felt very confident in my trust in God and in terms of things. And then I unfortunately let the world get to me and all the voices out there. It's not to say that we shouldn't be cautious. Um, I, I love uh, a letter that our pastor sent out. He said, trust God and wash your hands. <laughs> I thought, well, that's, that's good and practical, you know. And uh, that's, uh, there's a lot to be said for that. But the one good thing that can come out of this is you can evaluate your relationship with God. You can evaluate what you are believing him for and trusting him for. In spite of how everything looks, are you going to stand in courage and in faith and trust him? And... Because that's it's it's our faith is more important than anything. Our faith in God is so so important, and and it says throughout the scriptures that we need to hold on to our faith at all times until the end, and not give up hope, not be frightened, not be discouraged, not be jealous, not be um, overwhelmed. And when, if we're connected enough with God, he, he guides us and he works us through these difficult situations in our lives and in the world. So I, I am encouraging you to, to be willing to, to look at yourself and say, okay, there's some issues. I have some issues here and see it as a blessing. See it as a blessing. If you realize that you're in places of fear recognizes this is where you're not trusting God and that your relationship with him isn't as close as it could be. So, and then, and then repent, you know, confess that to God, repent, turn to him. Cause when you do that, he can help you ask for his forgiveness and receive it. And then turn to the scriptures and work at overcoming your unbelief. Trust the word of God and what it says. So I wanted to share with you, um, I thought, oh, it'd be nice to read Psalm 91 today. Okay, we'll read that together, and then I want to read part of Psalm 103. So Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, who abides in the shadow of the Almighty. So, you know, we've got pretty got to be close to him if we're in his shadow. We'll say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions that's his wing, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. <clears throat> I lost my place. <laughs> you, 
You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your habitation, no evil shall befall you, nor scourge come near your tent. For he will give his angels charge of you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he cleaves to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And I took time before I talked to you guys today to reflect on God's love. Because he's told us overtly, just, I love you with an everlasting love. And he's shown us his love through his power and through Jesus Christ, through what he did for us, so that we could be in relationship with him. We don't have to be under the power of sin anymore. He just, he loves us so much. And so I closed my eyes and, and thought about that. And I pictured, I pictured, it's kind of like the air is it's it's the, the air is his love the water is his love everything the universe is his love for us and we're in the middle of it we're surrounded by his love and i thought about me being surrounded by his love and how much he loves me and has always loved me and will love me for the rest of eternity he he loves me and he loves you he has surrounded you with his love. And we need to learn how to be secure in that and to trust his scriptures, trust his words to us. So if you're in this place of, of challenge right now, I, I urge you to change how you think, to start working on changing how you think, to not think about fear and what if, what if, what if. Instead, fix your eyes on Jesus. And that's... Um, Hebrews 12, 1 through 5 is a really good section too. Um, I've read that to you before, and I'm going to read to you from Psalm 103, okay? Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm saying our. You know why? Because we say this for our grace at night when my husband and I say it together. We say ours. Let me go back. I want to say it properly. Because you know what's funny about this psalm? I, I looked at it. I thought, I don't understand. He's saying your. Who is he talking to? And um, he's talking to himself. He's talking to his own soul and saying, listen up. God has forgiven you. He's forgiven you your sins and he's healed you. So he's talking to himself. So... When you read this, go to Psalm 103 and realize that this is how you need to take authority over yourself and say, listen up, you. You trust God. He loves you. So, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. So, he's starting out by praising God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, sins, yeah, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And I, I love that verse, and we say it every night for our, our dinner blessing. And um, there's a lot to be said for remembering and reminding ourselves, which we're told to do. We want to build the good stuff in our minds, okay? So that's, that's it for today. Tomorrow's a new day, and... Let's let's praise God for that, that he's given us another day to come draw closer to him and to share his love with others. All right, we'll see you.